Welcome to the last Sunday after Pentecost celebration. Our opening hymn is number 448. Service continues on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first readings from the book of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries. And I will bring them into their own lands and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses and in all the habited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture and they shall lie down in good grazing land. And they shall feed on the rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy, and I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them and he shall feed them and be their shepherd 
and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you, all you lands. Serve the Lord with, the, with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know, his, know this, the Lord himself is God. He, he himself has made us and we are his we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter the, his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. He, his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from the age to age. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks to you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which, we, you, which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And, and when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not care for you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I don't know how many of you noticed uh, when I read our collect for the day. It says, Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore things in, all, in your beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth divided and enslaved by sin may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All the peoples of the earth, divided 
and enslaved by sin. It's a powerful statement. And it's one that I think speaks to uh, our, our reading from Matthew today. Because Jesus is talking about the end times, the second judgment. He's talking about separating people. And as I've told you before, any time in Scripture, when you have a choice between being a sheep or a goat, you want to be sheep. It's never good to be the goat. Um, but Jesus is saying, I'm going to separate out my people. And in this particular situation, he doesn't say by those who uh, have professed faith in him, although in other places it does. There seems to be an implication here that these are his, his people. They've already professed, and yet there's this sorting. He says, I'm going to separate you in the sheep, and the goats, the sheep are those who have cared for me, who have fed me, who have given me water, who have clothed me, who have visited me. And the sheep are surprised, right? They're like, well, I don't remember doing any of that for you. And he says, whenever you did it to one of my children, to the least of these, you did it to me. That's a powerful statement. Whenever we choose to care for another human being, we do it for the Lord. We care for God. And when we choose not to, the same is true. Now, many people take issue with this reading. They don't like this idea of, of people being separated as sheep and goats and this idea of being sent to hell. It says to go with the devil and his angels. My response to that has always been uh, that if, if you're going to look at Scripture, if you're going to believe what Scripture has to tell us, then you need to be prepared for that sort of a sorting. There's nothing in Scripture to indicate that that will not be the case. People say, how could a loving God possibly do that? Can't, won't we have uh, an infinite number of times to uh, profess our faith in God and to uh, profess our love for others? And I, my answer to that is, I don't know. That might be the case. But what I do know is that Scripture tells us to make that choice here and now, while we're on earth to choose to follow God and to love one another as ourselves. The choice is very, very clear in Scripture. You need to make that choice today. Don't plan on getting multiple choices, multiple opportunities down the road after you die, whatever the case might be, whatever is running through your mind right now. Scripture says choose now. Choose now. And so when Jesus is sorting these people, and he says that they're from all nations, right? From the whole known world. Now, this would have been a shock to the Jewish people because they thought that they were God's chosen people. And Jesus is saying very clearly, I am going to bring in people from all the nations. People you don't know about. People who are not Jewish. People who are not whatever idea you have in your head. He says, I'm going to bring them in and I'm going to sort them based on how they've loved one another. So how are you loving your neighbor? How are you using the gifts that God has given you to care for those around you? I certainly look at my life and I can look at many ways that I turn a blind eye to suffering. Many ways where I choose my own security over others' basic needs. And I know there's all the debates about how do you help another? What's the best way to go about that? Uh, are, there, are there not some ways where you're simply adding to the problem or not, not helping another get to a better place? And I don't have answers to all those questions, but I do know this. If our hearts are not troubled by the suffering in the world, and we need to examine that. We need to take that to God and ask God to convict us of a new way, a new way to love, to have compassion, to reach out to the world, to find uh, what it is that we're called to do. Now, you and I, we can't solve every single problem that every single person has because sin is still a part of the world. We're going to continue to make bad choices. We're going to continue to impact our lives and the lives of those around us in negative ways. We cannot 
erase sin in others. We can't even do it in ourselves. But we can strive to love one another. We can strive to make a difference where we're called and where we're able. I told you before that nobody can do everything, but everybody should do something. Every one of us should find some way that we are able to share God's love with the world. That could be visiting people. That could be taking food to people. That could be volunteering at a shelter, at the outreach, whatever the case might be. Find something. And find it not as a, as a check mark. Say, okay, well, I, I've, I've done that. Got that checked off my list. I'm good to go. That'll make God happy now. What makes God happy is when our hearts are turned in love and compassion towards one another. That's what makes God's heart happy. So find that outlet for you. Find that place where you can serve. And in this week leading up to Thanksgiving, begin that with Thanksgiving. Give thanks for all your many blessings because that will put you in a place, in a mindset to want to return that thanks, to want to return those blessings, to share those gifts with the world around you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you for the many blessings and opportunities that you've laid before us. Open our hearts and minds to seek you, to serve you, to be guided by you into loving those around us. Help us to reach out, to feed, to clothe, to comfort and care for your children. All this we ask in your son's holy name. Amen. Our service continues on page 358. Let's say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 3, are found on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, 
Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please turn to page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Our closing hymn is number 654. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.